Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Blazer back with another video on my channel and in today's video we're going to be teaching you how to do pan and crop and after effects. So I've had a lot of requests on making a pan and crop tutorial and making any tutorial in, in general and I finally am going to do an after effects tutorial. I hope you guys like it a lot. Before we get into this video, remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you guys are new. It'll help me so much. So basically in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do pan and crop. And as you can see, I have my last edit I did. It was the season two, chapter two cinematic edit. And I'm going to be showing you how to do pan and crop. And also I'm going to be showing you how to actually pan and crop on an, um, as, um, a clip itself. So I'm going to be showing you that too. So as you can see here, I'm going to be showing you how to pan and crop on this. So this is without any pan and crop and that's what it's going to look like beforehand and um, at the end I'm going to show you what it's going to totally look like. But first we're going to be showing you pan and crop on just the cinematic itself. So as you can see this is going to be without pan and crop, this is just bare bones, everything and I'll be showing you three cinematics. So the first three, this is what it's going to look like without any pan and crop. This is just syncing so I've only synced the clips. Um, that's going to be another tutorial I'm going to be showing you syncing and after effects too. But this is without any pan and crop, here it is. So there's the pan and crop, without any pan and crop, those three clips. And as you can see, there's a big black bar here, but I'll be telling you um, why that actually is in the future. But this is without, without any pan and crop. But the first thing I do actually really want to tell you before I actually start to pan and cropping, um, I do want to say when you are recording cinematics to actually have flow in it. So always have some flow when you're doing the cinematics just like this. Um, as you can see the cinematic is going. That's how I do some of my transitions is having some nice flow just like this. You can see it kind of goes right across and it looks like it's a, sing a single clip. So that's kind of how I like to do my transitions. So when you're recording them, always try to have a nice flow and a transition. So coming out of this way, it always comes out. And then with the same with um, going to the next transition it um, comes out and then it kind of has a nice flow to it. So just like that. And then I already have my um, pan and crop over here, but we're gonna be showing you these clips first. So the first thing you wanna do is have um, have the transform um, open. So when you have the clip, it looks like this in general. And then what you wanna do is click on that little arrow and then go to transform. And then you, it pops up with all these different like position, scale, rotation, opacity. All those kind of things so like what um this just kind of makes it darker that's this the rotation is how it rotates so that's a big factor in doing pan and crop is rotation so you just want to go click that bound to zero scale is you know it's going in going out um very common stuff so let's make that back to normal um position it's kind of how it moves it so you could actually do kind of nice movements like this and a nice movement. So the first thing you wanna do is click on your clip and then go down to um, scale. You're gonna to wanna to scale it up to um, whatever you guys want to, it to be scaled up to. But my personal um, thing I like to do is around 160-ish. That's kind of how I like it. And then you wanna go down to rotation, click on rotation. And then you wanna go down to like a negative 10 to like a negative, like probably around a negative eight, negative nine to negative uh, 11, 12, 13 something like that so i'm going to go down to like a negative um 13 that's what you're going to want to do for that and then go down to the opposite end and then you're going to want to keep the scale so you're going to want to click on this arrow um this little dot down here so it um, keeps it at 161 and you're going to want to flip this so basically flip this to negative 13 to like a plus 13 plus 12 that's what i'm going to do there and then go you want to go down to the middle of the clip um it doesn't have to be the middle it could be like one off or something like that but you want to go try to go to the middle of the clip and you're going to want to um, bring the scale down to around like a 100 and um, sometimes I like to do like a 103, 104. That's kind of how I like it. And you're going to want to highlight all of these um, key points right here and then click F9 on your keyboard. And that makes it so um, you could actually click it and then go into this graph editor. And you're going to first want to do is go down to the rotation um, key points, go down to the graph editor. And then you come up with um, the little points here that you can move around and stuff to make the flow. This is how you make it all flow and stuff. So what you want to do for the rotation is pull this one down, pull this up, and you're going to want to kind of have it um, close together so it's not like super far apart and they kind of like snug. So when you click off of it, um, it'll show like it kind of looks like a straight line, but not exactly. And then for that's what it's going to look like here. So as you can see, it does have a little bit of a weird bump in between. So it looks kind of awkward. So what you want to first do, second do is go into the scale and then click the same thing, graph editor. 
and then you could see these key points again and then you're going to want to click it and then bring it down to like let's say um where like a 120 is like where we're, it just kind of looks kind of close to the bottom but not exactly to the bottom and then you're going to want to click on this one go down to the same exact area and then you're going to want to do is click on these guys and then go down just a little bit over to the side to make it into like a nice bump and you're going to want to have it kind of like a smooth circle so this is what it's going to look like when you actually kind of have the pan and crop basically done it's going to look like this so that's kind of it for the pan and crop that's all you kind of have to do is just kind of have that flow and when you see these black bars, it's totally fine because what you're going to have on these cinematic edits is have um, black bars that cover it. So these black bars are going to be covered by other black bars at the end of the video. But that's kind of how it looks like. And I'm going to show you um, again on this next one. So you're going to want to do the same exact thing, scale and rotation. You're going to first want to click on scale and you're going to want to scale it up to around the same exact area as the last one. So it looks kind of similar. So I'm going to do the same exact one as 161 and then rotation this time. As you can see, it ended with plus 12. So what you're going to want to do on this is now go to that plus 12 and make it a nice. Um, it just makes it very nice and smooth. So it like kind of ends off with the same thing. And then you're going to want to go to the same exact opposite side and then click the same scale. So you're going to want to have the same 161. And then you're going to want to bring down the plus 11 to minus 11. So this is basically like a domino effect. We're basically just flipping it each um, time. And then you just want to go in the middle and bring the scale down to the same exact thing. You can bring it down to like a 103. Um, I'm actually going to bring it down to like a 105. I feel like that's going to look a little bit better. And you're going to want a key point. So you're going to want to drag your cursor all over all of them. And then click F9 again. So it highlights all of them and makes them to like um, key points. And then you're going to want to go back into the graph editor and do the same exact thing. But it's the flip. So it's going to be the opposite side this time. So it's going to look like this. And then you're going to want to just bring them back um, down. And it's going to want to look like the straight line again. So remember the straight line. So at the very end, it's going to look like this kind of a straight line. It looks very smooth and nice. And you're going to go want to go down to the scale. Um, click on those and then come back into the graph editor. And you're going to want to bring it the same exact thing down. This, this is basically the same exact thing as last time nothing different here you're just gonna if it looks already good like that 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 doesn't i don't think i need to move these bottom arrows at all so that looks perfect and then when you play it back it's gonna look like this as you can see it looks perfect and it's very smooth and the rotation looks very good so you can see the rotation um is right there you can see it moving and then comes in comes back out so it makes it very nice nice flow and very nice to look at and watch so we're going to do one last one and as you can see this one has black bars so what i did with this one is basically the cinematic was a little low that i like so i basically moved it up because the cinematic if you looked at it normally it looks like this and it looks just kind of it looks low because i really wanted to showcase that the vault was right here and when i had the black bars over it the vault was already getting getting covered so what i really like to do was um kind of bring it back up so it, it looks like this so the black bars reach exactly when i put the black bars at the end it reaches exactly like this and then the vault could see it it looks perfectly in like the real cinematic edit um, so you're going to do want to do the same exact thing. So with, with this one, I'm just going to switch it up just a little bit. I'm going to go down to, um, remember again, a negative, let's go down to a negative eight and let's click on the rotation. I forgot to do that. But as you can see, it's a negative 10. So let's go down to like a negative eight and you're going to want to put up the scale up to around like a 180. I'm going to go really big on this one because trust me, it looks good at the end. So 180, as you can see, all the black bars are all covered now because of the scale. So you're going to want to go down to the other side. And then you're going to want to, let's go down to like a 169-ish. And then let's go plus, um, plus, let's go like a plus 15 this time. Let's make it very, let's, let's go plus 14. That looks, that would look pretty good. Plus 13, that looks good. And then go back down to the middle again. And then remember doing the same exact thing. You're going to want to, as you can see, it looks like a little bit off this time. Uh, that actually looks perfect like that. So let's go down to, um, let's go down to like a one. 30 or something like that so it looks pretty perfect on there and then you want to do the same exact thing you're going to want to highlight all the keys press f9 again and then go down into the graph editor and then doing the same exact thing as last time just going to pull this um back and make it look like it's a straight line make it look very perfect and that looks pretty good you want to go back go down to the scale um portion of it and you're going to want to bring it 
the same exact thing. As you can see, it is a little off this time, so it's basically the same exact thing you're going to want to do. You just want it to look very smooth. The curves, you want to make it look very smooth and nice. So we're going to do the same exact thing. Look smooth and nice. Um, I might actually want to bring this just a little back like that. And this is what it's going to look like. So as you can see, it looks very good. And that's kind of the um, pan and cropping. As you can see, now you can see that the the vault is kind of in the middle. But if I did actually raise this up to where it was before, uh, or if I, I raised it down like where it was before, never mind, it's gonna look like that. That looks very um, odd and does not look good. So you wanna so you wanna keep it up just like that, where it's raised up, and it looks like that is the final product. So that's gonna be it for the cinematics. Now we're gonna go back into the clips and um, see how I pan and crop on the clip side. So now that we're on the clip, the Fortnite clip, here's what it looks like without the pan crop. I already showed you, but I'm going to show you again. And that's what it looks like. So this is just with syncing attached. As you can see, the syncing bars right here. And it looks just like that. Very smooth. It looks nice already with just syncing. But we're going to make it look a thousand times better. So what we're going to want to do is kind of the same exact thing. Scale rotation. You could use these positions and stuff, but on this, I really don't need to. It's just... The same with um, the cinematics and stuff. You could use a position. I might do a tutorial just separately on that because it's it's kind of um, hard to like learn that and stuff to, to have it very nice and smooth. So I might do a tutorial just on the position and anchor or point. But today we're just going to be doing scale and rotation. So your first thing we're going to want to do is um, just keep the scale up and you're going to put it um, to like a 110 to a 111. That looks pretty good. This is basically just the starting point, so when it comes in from a certain cinematic or another clip, it just kind of has this nice fallout. So let's go down right here, and then um, you're just going to want to bring this down back to a 100. So you're going to click 100 on there, so it brings it back to a, its original state. And you're going to want to go to the um, key, key point right here, so like where the beat happens, and you want to have, um, like it's right here with the pickaxe swing, so I put it on the pickaxe swing. And you're gonna want to bring this nicely up to like around a 120. I'm kind of, I kind of go high on my um, um, position and scale and stuff because I like it. I feel like it looks cool in the final montage. So you're gonna go down to like a 121 ish, and then uh, around right here. So it's like I say, like 10 keyframes off from the final clip. You're gonna want to click another keyframe, and then bring this back down to a 100. So you're gonna bring it back down to a 100 again, just like this clip. So it just kind of has that nice bump into it. And then right when you bring it to the final clip, you're going to want to bring this back up to around a 130-ish. That looks really good, 138. And then you're going to want to go back to the very end and then click 100 at the very last key point of that clip. So it looks just like this without having it, um, without syncing all the pan and crop and stuff. It looks like this. As you can see, that looks very weird. And that's why you really always need to do the F9 and make it smooth and stuff so you're going to want to highlight all of these clips and then you're going to want to click f9 again and you're going to want to go into the graph editor and then click these points again so these all these points will be highlighted and you want to just make it very smooth so on this as you can see it's a very smooth point and let's just make this up a little bit more so it just looks like this as you can see it kind of just zooms in so it looks very nice when it comes out from a clip and then same with this point right here you want to have a nice zoom in so it like takes um, a longer time to like zoom in. So like when it hits that point, then it will um, hit it at its strongest point. So we're gonna just make this like a quick, a quick boost in, and then it's gonna come out very quickly, just like this. And then you're gonna want to click on the final key point where you wanna where the person's gonna be hitting the shot, and you wanna have it. Actually, let's move this key point just back up a little bit more, and you're gonna have this key go all the way as you could um, as far as you could push it out this way let's do that and then put the final key point where he hits the shot let's bring that down a good amount and for the final key point you want to have this out and then bring it all the way as far as you can out and just bring it down a little bit so don't have it like straight just bring it down like at a good um, angle and then you want to bring the last key point all the way up like a, uh, not as far as a big sand because now would look really weird you want to bring it up a good amount so it looks just like that at the end. And what it should look like at the end, if I um, haven't tweaked anything else, let's see what it looks like. So it brings in, nice boost, and then boom, shot up. So it looks very good. As you can see, this has like a nice bump to it, and then it goes back down and then takes a little bit of time, and boom. Right when it hits the shot, it goes in, 
just like that and then when it comes out it brings all the um, scale back to 100 and it looks very good when you bring that into a transition so what it looks like total at the very end as you can see bump and then boom right into the clip and shoots and it looks very clean just like that and puts a lot more um, it just looks way better when you do this and the very last thing you want to do when you want to um, pan and crop on this what I like to do sometimes is go down to rotation and right when you um, you click on the rotation and then you want to go back right where the clip hits so right when the person hits the shot and you want to bring this up to like a plus four I'd say this looks like really good plus like two to plus five or plus six it looks very good and you want to go back to the very end again and you see the black bars are like that but you want to click on the rotation and then bring it back to a zero so it goes back to normal state and then you want to highlight all the key points again press f9 go back into the graph editor and then do the same thing as you did when you were doing the pan um the scale and stuff so you want to bring this as far as you can up bring this down and then bring this um to far as you can bring that key point up so it looks just like this and then when you play it it just kind of has a nice little boop, to, like a, a, a twist to it, you know, like when you have a nice rotation. So it looks like this, boom, and then twist, and it comes out. And it looks very good, and it's just clean. I, I think it looks very clean and nice. So the final product is when you do pin a crop on a clip, is like this. So that's kind of it. There's no gun sounds, no effects, no CC. This is just the sinking pan and crop. There's no CC, there's no gun sounds, as you can see there would be a, a sniper there that you add in later. So that's all uh, after post-production and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the whole tutorial on pan and crop for clips and cinematics. I hope you guys enjoyed a lot and I hope you guys learned a lot and um, used these kind of techniques because when you're starting to edit, if you're new to editing or if you are um, been editing for a long time but you want to improve, this will help you a lot and I hope you guys enjoyed it a lot. So remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel if you guys are new. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Peace out.